Okay, 4.8 liter owners, who wants more torque? Can you add long tube headers? What about a cam? No, the answer is boost. It's always boost. Even with a stock cam, the answer is boost. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and where are my 4.8 liter fans? Richard, how can I make more torque from my 4.8 liter? Yeah, very exciting stuff, but first of all, hey, welcome to the channel. 4.8 liter torque, can I add long tube headers? Yes, what about a camshaft? Uh, maybe, we know what the answer, the answer is always boost. Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out how we make more torque from our 4.8 liter, cause let's face it, it's the, the small man on the block and it could use more torque production, obviously, especially down low for guys that are using these for maybe towing or just driving around. Let's see, the, the 4.8 obviously feels a little bit more anemic, obviously, than the 5.3 liter and certainly a six liter. So how do we improve upon that? What really is the best way? I'm gonna show you a couple of different things and we're gonna give you the obvious answer here would be to just make it bigger put a 5.3 in and put a 6.0 in but short of that let's take a look at a couple of things first of all we have our stock motor here up on the engine dyno this is the junkyard 4.8 the only modification to this otherwise stock LR4 was a set of pistons. We put in a small dome set of JE pistons in this particular one that we used the testing for. So it had about another half point of compression or so. But otherwise, it had the stock throttle body truck intake manifold. We had bigger injectors in it only because we were going to be adding other things later on. But, you know, when you're dialing in the air fuel and timing, that doesn't matter. Stock 706 heads that had a valve spring upgrade, again, for later on a camshaft. And other than the pistons, stock rod, stock crank, stock block. And we ran this thing with stock exhaust manifolds as well. We ran it with the Holly HP management system so that we could dial in each combination, give it the right air fuel that provided the optimum tune and optimum power curve. And so run in this thing with stock, you know, in stock condition with just an electric water pump and stuff and headers and or, or stock exhaust manifolds with two and a half inch exhaust extensions on them. Our little 4.8 liter did good. It made 330 horsepower at 5,700 RPM. And up here, you know, fairly flat torque curve, very consistent within one or two foot pounds. But the peak actually was 335 foot pounds at 4,600 RPM. So, how do we make more torque short of making this motor bigger? Well, one of the things you can do on a 4.8 is, is change the stock exhaust manifolds and put on some long tube headers. And I'll go ahead and show you a picture here. And you can see the long tube headers do indeed improve power. In fact, they improve power everywhere. And now I know everybody wants me to go look down at 2,000. RPM, we can kind of extrapolate what's going on. The long tube headers are going to be worth power down there as well, and they're worth a fairly consistent gain. But let's face it, even if you gain six, eight, ten foot pounds of torque and the same amount of horsepower, that's not going to change the 4.8 nearly enough. I mean, we want bigger gains than that. And it's important also to note that the header that you pick is also going to determine um, how much power you get down low. A shorty header is not really going to do this. It needs to be a long tube header. And on a 4.8, I probably would pick a smaller primary diameter than I would on a, you know, a, a certainly a modified 5.3 or 6.0. But let's see what happens. Okay, the header didn't really work out too good. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our stock exhaust manifold. What happens if we add, let's say, a camshaft? And this camshaft is is fairly good size but it gives us an idea of what's happening we got big power gains i'm going to go ahead and move over here this was a 224 cam probably bigger much bigger than i would pick for a 48 but what's going to happen on a 48 with most of the cams that you pick is you're not going to see a big change in power down low here we saw a big change in power up top where we're a good bit over 400 horsepower and over 360 foot pounds of torque but most of the gains came past 44 500 RPM. That's not where we're going to be using them for most of the daily driving, certainly not for towing or anything like that. So on camshafts for a 4.8, it's really hard to get a small enough camshaft that would be better than the stock cam, especially down low in the 2000 to 3500 RPM range. It's going to be really hard to choose a camshaft that would be any better than a stock camshaft. But let's take a look at one way to actually make more power, even with a stock. Cam. Okay, we take a look at our quest for torque on our small 4.8 liter long tube headers could certainly help as we talked a little bit displacement obviously beneficial. Uh, other things maybe you could do compression but we had already kind of raised the compression on our 4.8 and then you get into problems possibly with um, you know detonation levels and things like that. So 
how can we make like significant changes in power without resorting to losing power down low and gaining power up top as we saw like with our camshaft well the best way to do that obviously is with boost and here's the thing and i like this like type of combination because it doesn't require a camshaft change, although we are going to talk about a camshaft change right after this, and we'll see a big difference between doing the camshaft swap after we've added our turbo than before adding the turbo. So let's take a look and see what happens when we add boost to a 4.8 liter, even low boost that you definitely can run on pump gas, all with the stock camshaft. So and once again, our stock motor, stock exhaust manifolds, you know, we're looking at 330 horsepower and 335 foot-pounds of torque before we put our headers on, because quite honestly, if you're going to turbocharge your combination, you're not gonna buy headers, and I would recommend it buying headers first and then doing a turbo. You should just go all in on the turbo setup. So let's take a look and see what happened when we added our turbo, our turbo kit. So this is what this is what happened. I'm going to go ahead and move myself down here a little bit to get it out of the way. But here's what happened when we added uh, actually a peak of 7.8 pounds out at the top, but was only around seven and a half at the horsepower peak. And it started out down low here at 3000 RPM, 6.3 pounds. What we had were a custom single turbo kit that I did. We used these inexpensive of uh, DNA or other kinds of tubular headers. Honestly, I would recommend just using the stock exhaust manifolds or now there are lots of other options. It doesn't really matter and don't get fixated on the type of exhaust manifolds that you're using, whether they merge properly as we saw. If you take a look at the Pontiac video, I did a merge like this where it's at 90 degrees and at seven pounds, guess what? It still works fantastic. So don't get too caught up in the exhaust manifolds that you're using or tubular headers or any of that. If you're looking for low speed power on a 4.8 just get all the exhaust to the turbo and that's exactly what we did we use these headers i don't like them because they tend to burn spark plug wires and even if you don't do that they don't really give good access to spark plugs which you might be looking at and changing and checking to see how they run but our turbo kit consisted of those headers a y pipe i put two provisions for waste gates we use turbo smart uh, 45 millimeter hyper gates both of them with seven pound springs on them all we did was run a T from the line, you know, coming from the intake manifold out to the wastegates to control them. And we ran right at about seven pounds. We ran uh, an intercooler also on this thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We ran a GT45 turbo. I ran the air to water intercooler that we always run, running dyno water through it. You can run an air to air again at this power level. In fact, I ran the Vortec on my Mustang around with no intercooler at seven pounds. And actually that runs fine. I ran it on pump gas. Um, we had the GT45 turbo, which is very, very inexpensive. There are lots of them available from different places. Um, once we got this combination going, then we ran uh, exhaust coming out of the turbo blowing through uh you know with our stock cam stock throttle body stock truck intake manifold this is our combination and run with a turbo like i said seven and a half pounds we're looking at 524 horsepower and a peak of 529 foot pounds of torque i know that our horsepower and torque numbers were very consistent we're very close to each other na and so when we added basically the same amount of boost, at least at the horsepower and torque peaks, we had a similar kind of gain. Basically, it just gained power through the whole thing. And if you're looking at down low, I know you want to see 2,000 RPM, but I don't have that here. But you should be able to look at this and extrapolate from that. You're going to have more than a gain of 100 foot-pounds of torque, even way down there, if you size your turbo properly to come on if you want full boost at 2,000 RPM, let's say. You'll be able to do that. So... Adding a turbo, even with a stock cam, is going to give you like huge power gains, and more importantly for the 4.8 or liter, huge torque gains. So you don't even have to put a camshaft in it to get big gains, stock cam, small turbo, pump gas, seven pounds of boost, and you're going to make your 4.8 feel like a 6.8 or a 7.8. It runs really good. But how can we make it run even better? Now let's talk about what happens when you add a camshaft. Okay, guys, now let's take a look and see what happens when we add a camshaft to our equation. We saw on a naturally aspirated combination, even put a mild camshaft 
in a 4.8 liter is probably going to hurt low speed power. You just can't get a small enough camshaft in there really to get big gains, especially down low where people are interested in it. But let's see what happens when we add a cam to our turbo combination and we have a little bit better idea of what's going on here. So this is our turbo combination. This is our NA combination with a stock cam, adding boost with our turbo kit to the stock cam. Here's what happens when we added a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 1 turbo cam. You could go even smaller than this, I think. Like I might put a Truck Norris cam or something like that in here. But let's take a look. Let's say that you added the Stage 1 cam. This is really at the same boost, exactly, you know, actually only slightly less boost once we added the turbo to the combination. It, it had a peak of like seven pounds instead of seven and a half pounds but we're looking at 646 horsepower 647 horsepower from 523 so we've gained 120 horsepower on the top end most of the gains came past 4500 like we saw with the camshaft but let's look down here at 3000 rpm we are seeing a little bit of a loss but here's the thing hey richard we don't want the loss down low we're talking about low speed torque yes but you're still up 150 foot pounds of torque from the NA combination. So even though you lost a little bit from the stock camshaft, putting this camshaft gained you an extra 124 or 120 plus horsepower on the top end, which is going to be good and you're going to be able to enjoy that. I'm going to go ahead and move myself so you can see the NA combination a little bit better. We'll go ahead and move up here. But, and yes, you lost a little bit down low but you still have so much more with the turbo and that gives you the leeway to put, at least put another small camshaft in it and gain lots more on top. So the key to 4.8 liter torque, add boost and then add a cam. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.